Hey all y'all, welcome to live, Nitty Live. Yes, 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 we are doing it this weekend. I wasn't sure, I wasn't sure, but um, yesterday, I, actually truly Friday, I think I really decided like, nope, I wanna do it. Uh, I have a huge, huge fiber happening update. We missed Pattern Spotlight last week, and I'm like, and I feel like, <laughs> we're just days away from a big event Tuesday if you're in the United States even if you're outside the United States you know what I'm talking about I was like you know what I think we need some knit tea live so I'm doing it hey bear welcome so glad you're here this weekend um so yeah I was like we're gonna do like I'm gonna do it I'm doing knit tea live I need this I need this hour I need this power hour <laughs> I have my coffee. Um, you are watching this on the replay. Now is a great time to give this live stream a thumbs up. I'm going to try to remember my plugs at the beginning like that. And if you are new here, either coming in live or watching on the replay, make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell. So um, just, hey Whitney, welcome, welcome, welcome. Please say hi in the chat box. That lets me know that you are here. Um, I, I think I've talked about this in the past. I normally, normally I have had a second device off to the side so I can monitor the live stream from within the YouTube studio, which is a creator thing, but I can't find my Chromebook, which is what I usually use for it. I don't know where I put it. I mean, I don't know how I lose a laptop, but I did. It's somewhere. It's it's somewhere, and it's probably my eye keeps just glancing past it, and I don't see it. But anyway, um, that means I don't, within the application I use to live stream, I don't always have an accurate count of how many people are watching at the moment. So anyway, I'm going to just wait a minute or two to see, and if anyone else shows up. Today's live stream is going to be a little different in that I'm actually going to start with Pattern Spotlight. Normally, I when I do a Pattern Spotlight, I do it in the last 15, 30 minutes, but today I'm going to do it at the beginning because I had, it's not even I had, <laughs> it's not like I created them or anything, um, but there were a number of new pattern releases. This was like the biggest update that I had done to a fiber happening since I started doing fiber happenings. If you don't know, uh, on my website, knitsworthsat.com, I have the fiber indie list and the fiber indie list is a list of designers and dyers and spinners who sell their work, hashtag off rav. I have videos about the whole new rav debaclery if you want to find out more about that. But anyway, um, so that started a couple months ago now, and along with the Fiber Indie List, I started doing what's called Fiber Happenings, and that is just, it's a weekly roundup of pattern releases, news, sales, whatever I find in the off rab Fiber Universe. <laughs> whatever I find, I put in Fiber Happenings. It gets updated every Friday, and I had like, there were a lot there were a lot of new patterns at the end of October and not all of them are socks. So we're going to take a look at that. Hi Jillian. Hi. Welcome. 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 So glad you could make it this week. So, yeah, we're going to do pattern spotlight at the top and I'm so excited for this. I don't know why, but I am. One of the designers on the Fiber Indie list, Aklori Designs. She's a Tunisian crochet designer. She is having a sale on all of her patterns right now. And I think this is a great opportunity for me to scratch that itch I've been having every time I see one of her new patterns released and buy one. So I'm gonna ask you to help me decide which pattern to buy. And then I'm thinking that I will maybe vlog the process of me working on this Tunisian crochet project and kind of give you updates. I haven't exactly figured out the entire format, but I thought it would be kind of a fun way to show off Tunisian crochet, which is a technique, a 
is that the right word? Whatever. It's a craft that I enjoy. I'm not an expert in it. I'm very much a beginner in many ways, but I do enjoy it. And I thought it'd be a fun way to encourage me to dive in because you know, I don't have enough projects in my life. <laughs> I don't have enough projects in my life. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, then depending on how much time we have left, I'm going to give you an update on one of my, what's on my needles, one of my projects on my needles. And um, at the very end, and I will give warning before we get to this, I'm gonna talk a little bit about voting because it's important and we all need to do it. And this is going to be, even though I'm very partisan, I am very partisan, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I have strong views on this stuff. But this is going to be nonpartisan discussion about the importance of voting. So anyway, that's going to be at the end. So you, and I'm putting that at the end. So if you're like, Carrie, I can't deal. I can't deal with it. I understand. You'll know when to stop the video, you know. And if you're watching on replay, I will have timestamps down below so that you can just skip past it if you want. So, you know, I want people's emotional care to be fulfilled. But we're going to start with fun and we're going to start with pattern spotlight. So anyway, um, do, 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 do. or do you first want to, no, well, no, we're going to start with pattern spotlight. I'm going to stick, stick with the plan. I stick with the plan. <laughs> so not like me. Mm. So who's ready for pattern spotlight? Give me a thumbs up. Say yay, nay. I have no idea right now what the latency is on this live stream. I try to have it set to ultra low so that there's very little delay between me saying something and then you guys hearing it, but it doesn't always work. Hey, Samantha, welcome, welcome, welcome. So glad you're here. All right, so, oh, real quick as well. Um, I think last week there might have been a little bit of audio weirdness that occurred. So if you, while listening to the live stream, if you're here now, if anything happens with the audio, please just let me know. Let me know in the chat. I will keep an eye on it. All right, so make sure I do not crash the stream and have to start over because that is a bummer when it happens. Such a bummer. Oh, okay. I, I promise I'm going to get to uh, Pattern Spotlight, but real, real, real quick. I just wanted to make mention of my eye look today. I'm going to go and close. I went green. This is the more wearable look for my Halloween <laughs> makeup look. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I will actually do that first. I will show you my Halloween look. My sister and I, we do a thing called, let me, I have to come here first. No, this, this, this is the one I want. My sister and I, oh, <laughs> you can see the live chat big time right now. My sister and I, we do a, um, we're gonna, whoop, we're gonna roll up because I'm too soon for that. Come over here. We, every week we get together online. She lives in Maine. We get together online to watch a movie together and we do a makeup theme. And this week's theme was witchy. And so I had my Halloween witchy look and I'm so proud of this look. I wanna show it off to everybody. Like, I'm so proud of this. I did the whole thing green and purple. Thank you, Jillian. Thank you. I'm very proud of it. And so what I'm doing today with my eyeshadow look is just the more wearable version of the green and purple eyeshadow. I, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't put green eyeshadow on my cheeks like it was blush like I did for the makeup look. Okay, we'll go back to the desktop share. Um, and I didn't put purple in my eyebrows the way I did with this. And I'm covering up my gray with my headband. By the way, if you want to know why I'm always wearing headbands in my videos, it's because I'm graying at the temple and I haven't gotten to the hairdresser to get my hair colored. And so that's how I'm covering it is with headbands. <laughs> All right, let's do pattern spotlight. Uh, let's get back to that. But that's, that, that, this is the everyday version of a green eyeshadow look with purple, purple eyeliner and purple underneath. I love makeup. <laughs> I do. I love makeup. I, I, I really wonder how my life would have been different had I had 
uh, YouTube as a teenager because I wasn't good at makeup as a teenager. I was not. Okay, so we're gonna go down. By the way, a little quick craftivism. Yes, the uh, let's just empower people 2020 is still up. Um, so, you know, even though election day is on Tuesday, you still have time if you want to work a purple bandana. So, uh, this is probably the last week I'm going to have this up on Fiber Happenings. But we are going to get down to the first pattern. And this is by Victoria Marchant. This is her Rebel Fingerless Glove. And I got to say, um, check out her blog post because she has a whole story about this pattern and what inspired it. I personally, uh, let's go look at it on her Lovecraft, on the Lovecrafts page. I personally feel like this, do, 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 there we go. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, that's worked well. Sorry, I'm just noticing where the YouTube chat box is. But I personally, when I saw this glove, I immediately went to Victorian England and steampunk when I saw this. So if you are at all into that aesthetic, I think this is a really great pattern to look at. It's lacy. This would be, if you haven't done a lot of lace yet, this would be actually a really good kind of introduction into lace knitting because this is a very straightforward um, lace pattern, lacy, I should say, pattern. And it's really, it's just lovely. It's very lovely. And yeah, I dig it. I dig this a lot. Um, let me go back over here to Fiber Indie List because I believe this is made with a four ply yarn. Oh, geez. What? Try to remember what the translation of four ply yarn is to the US system. Does anybody remember? Is four ply worsted weight? I think a four ply weight yarn is a worsted weighted yarn. So that, that glove would work up quickly, I gotta say. Yes, Samantha, I totally agree. The, I think those gloves totally are reminiscent of 80s Madonna music video. 100% agree with you on that. I could see doing that glove in like a lavender, a light lavender, and you would really nail that feel. Yeah, that's a great call. So that is the rubble glove. I think it's, it's a really cool pattern, I think. And like I said, if you're if you're wanting to kind of dip your toe into lace knitting or you haven't done lace knitting in a while and you want to get that feel again, I think that'd be a really good pattern to work with. Um, the nice thing too with that is because it's a glove and it's worked in the round, uh, the rest rows, because I'm pretty sure just looking at it, that that's not a true lace pattern. That is what's called a lacy pattern. Difference between true lace and lacy. Here it is. Lacy patterns have what we call rest rows. So one row, you're going to have your yarn overs and probably do your decreases, although sometimes the decreases are done on another row, but you have your yarn overs on one row. And then on the next row is usually a plain round of knitting. And usually if you're knitting flat, it's a purl row. And if you're knitting in the round, it's a knit row. So that's considered lacy knitting. True lace is knitting where your yarn overs and your decreases are happening on every row or on most rows of the knitted pattern. So lacy knitting is kind of a good introduction into lace knitting. And then lace knitting is like leveling that up, <laughs> if that all makes sense. So that's the difference. Do, 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 do. Okay, so let's go back to our, I don't even, oh, <laughs> I clicked on the wrong thing. That that was a video from last week. I should, I should remove those medias. All right, so we're going to scroll down to Amy Snell. She is a new designer on the Fiber Indie list. She is a designer and a teacher, 
Um, I think, unfortunately, her last day of signing up for her latest online class, which has to do with Christmas um, stocking knitting, was yesterday. I'm pretty sure the last day to sign up for that class was yesterday. But check out her website. She has a bunch of classes that are available for sale. And this is her uh, newish pattern, which is the Fizzy Drinks Felted Coasters. And we'll go over here again to Lovecraft to check it out. Do, do, do. Waiting, waiting, waiting for my internet. Okay, there we go. We'll try that. Okay, I have a broken link. Note to self, gotta fix that. So this is the Fizzy Drink Fuzzy Coasters. These are adorable. These are coasters, as you can see. But this is a mosaic knit pattern that's felted, which I think is so cool. Um, if you have been, and it's on sale for $4, uh, pretty, in the upcoming months, I want to do, sorry, let me just hold that picture for you. In the upcoming months, I want to do a, um, video or a live stream, one or maybe both, where I talk about specifically patterns for, uh, gift giving. And this, I think, is a fantastic project for gift giving. If you're like me and the idea of knitting, oh, and I just thought of this, I'll get to that in a second. The idea of knitting for people as gifts, I don't love doing patterns with sizing because I'm always nervous like, oh, do I know their foot size? Do I know, like, I'm not sure what size sweater I should knit for them. So I like to knit gifts for people where sizing doesn't matter. And this is a great, great pattern for this. Also, it's a fun way that you can do some mosaic knitting, and it just occurred to me, and maybe this is in the pattern, you could knit up, because this is a felted pattern, you could knit up a big square of this, felt it, and then cut it after the fact. In fact, now that I think about it, you could take this uh, pattern and almost treat it like you're making a fabric, like a felted fabric, cut it and sew it together to make boxes. There's a lot of neat things you could do with this now that I'm thinking about it, besides just making coasters. So I think um, this pattern has a lot of potential. It's mosaic knitting. I love mosaic knitting. Uh, if you don't know, mosaic knitting is a slip stitch color technique, and it looks a lot like Fair Isle but you do not carry two strands while you're knitting a row. Each row is knitted with one color and you slip the stitch of the other color basically. So it's very cool. I love mosaic knitting. It's a lot of fun and I think this is a really fun pattern <laughs> and it has a lot of potential. I think this has a lot of potential. Um, next up, we have Bullock Ozcan Designs. She is a newer designer to the Fiber Indie List, and we have a sock pattern. Yes, it's the first day of November. Socktober is officially over, but up on Fiber Happenings, I still have up all the sock patterns that were released over the last month. And this one came out, and I, I think this is gorgeous. I really, really do. Um, Let's look at it over on Etsy so we can see more photos. Jilly, Jillian, sorry, Jillian. Mosaic seems to be trending all over the place right now. It's really cool. Yeah, I think that, I feel like twisted slip stitch, or not twisted slip stitch, I feel like twisted cable patterns were definitely having a moment this year. And I agree, I think mosaic knitting is having a moment as well. Um, I think a lot of people are discovering it for the first time and that makes me very excited because it's a very approachable way to do uh, color work motifs that's not stranded color work, um, which I think can be very intimidating to people for understandable reasons. It's not, it takes, it takes getting used to knitting with two strands of, carrying two strands of yarn. So these are these socks. This cable pattern, I'm trying to remember uh, can I get in closer? There we go. I believe this, no, this is just a, this is a asymmetrical cable pattern. And one of the things I really like about how she designed this sock was she gave the cable pattern a wide area 
of 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 reverse stockinette to be against. So even though this is a cable mat pattern that she knitted on variegated yarn, the cable pattern still sticks out. And I think it's because of the large field of purl stitches surrounding it. And she designed this, uh, according to her description, she did design this um, with hand dyed variegated color yarn in, I'm not saying that well, sorry, got a little tongue tied there. But she designed this with this type of yarn in mind. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Here's the heel that you can see here. Pretty sure that is a short row heel. I'm 98% sure that is, I'm 99% sure that is a short row heel. Mm. But you know what? Honestly, if you, for whatever reason, don't like short row heels, you can normally very easily substitute that out. Um, it is not hard normally to trade one heel out for another, especially with a pattern like this, where the heel has no patterning on it and it looks like it's stockinette stitch all the way down. So that would be a fairly easy heel to swap out. Sometimes it gets a little complicated swapping out heels if there's patterning involved, but for something like that, I think it would be an easy heel to, uh, Mosaic is the new entrelock. Yes. Yes, Jillian. Mosaic is the new entrelock. I completely agree. Oh my God. I mean, entrelock knitting is fun and all, but you know, I've done entrelock knitting. I'm going to just come up here real quick. I've done entrelock and it's, it's fun, but it is kind of limited in terms of what you can do with it. And it's definitely something, I don't think I've done as much entrelock as other things because that is not something I'm like, I'm ready to like, del I need a pattern basically. That's what I'm trying to get at. I need a pattern. Okay. Hopefully my internet is holding okay. Well, okay. We'll see. I hope I don't lose y'all. Okay. So let's, we will get back to, let me, Just gonna get back to where I was here. Okay, uh, so next up we have another sock design. Not surprising, Socktober. Everyone's coming out with their um, <laughs> their, their uh, sock patterns. This is a second sock design from KBJ Designs, and this is her Acacia sock. Oh, come on. My in-bed's not working. That's okay, we'll go to the Etsy store. So there's a couple different ways that I find these pattern releases to put on fiber happenings. Come on, there we go. There's a couple of different ways that I find them. Um, one is designers will tell me, hey, I got this coming up, here are photos that you can use um, and such. And that's great when that happens. <laughs> I love when that happens. But a lot of times I find them because I'm subscribed to all of these designers newsletters or I see it on their social media and then I use an embed usually from either their Twitter or their Instagram to have a photo of it for fiber happenings. But this is the sock. This is kind of similar to the last sock that we looked at in that there is a cable pattern that is running down the side of the sock, but this is a wider cable pattern getting a little closer to it. And this is really delightful. She said that what inspired her of this was the acacia buds on a tree whose name I can't remember. <laughs> um, her heel here is really interesting because this is a flap and gusset heel. But what she has done with her flap and gusset, let's see if we can zoom in here, is it is a ribbing pattern. And this ribbing pattern mirrors the pattern here at the cuff. So I think that's kind of a cool design element that she's brought into this sock in terms of having the ribbing on the heel flap match the cuff. So that's that's really cool. And this is just, a, it's, a, it's another beautiful design. <laughs> you got a lot of choices. Oh, and uh, by the way, I forgot to mention with the last sock, that pattern is sized for the entire family from toddler through adult. This pattern is sized 
for adult feet, uh, small, medium, large, and extra large. So that's really cool. Sock patterns aren't always sized for various reasons. So I personally am a fan when a designer does have their sock with sizing. Cause like, I know for me, I have tiny feet. Like I have, t I have tiny ankles, I have small feet. So what I would design for myself isn't going to fit everybody. <laughs> And one of the reasons I'm not a professional designer is because of sizing, like I, grading patterns. Sorry, having slight internet delay because there's so much happening on this page. <laughs> there's so much happening. Let me close that. Maybe that should help. Okay, so, sure, sure, sure. Next, we have a shawl from Liz Cork Knit. Man, I swear, I feel like every week, Liz Cork has a new design coming out every other week. It's amazing. She's so prolific. Um, but this is a triangular shawl with cables. Again, I think we're feeling the cables are making it big. We're heading into fall, into winter, and everybody's got cables on their mind because cables and warmth, they just kind of go together, don't they? So, but this is really lovely. I mean, first of all, Okay, so this is a thing with me personally that I, I'm suckered in by color <laughs> every time. Please work. Do I have another broken link? Shoot, okay, let's try her website. I gotta fix that link. Ah. Do, 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 do. All right, so this is the design. It is gorgeous and yeah, I think that if you were wanting to explore cables for this first time, this would be a really good project. The body of this shawl looks like it's knit in um, garter, and then you have this cable patterning along the edge. So this would be kind of a good introduction, I think, to cables just at first glance. I know sometimes people, and I know I fall into this, will look at a triangular shawl and feel like, well, how do you wear it? I feel like these pictures actually give a really good example of ways that you can wrap a triangular shawl. Um, normally with a triangular shawl, uh, it's not within reach, but I have one that I did, and I a lot of times just wear it kind of like a bandana scarf. That's how I normally like to wear them. but. This is just, it's just lovely. I love the flow of the cables. This pattern to me just looks so serene. I'm just like, I feel like I could just stare at it and feel instantly relaxed. <laughs> and I know, and no, we're not done. We are not done. I'm gonna switch over here. There are more. There was like 10, I had 10 things that I had to update. Uh, I think I might skip this one because it's a book. Um, I'm going to go this to Periwinkle Dragon Designs. And uh, she entered onto the Fiber Indie list, I think, two weeks ago. And we looked at her. She had the sock, the cool sock that had, like, kind of almost like the bullseye on the heel and came out. And it was so, so cool. This pattern I'm about to show you is the, I think of almost like the mitten version of it. So this is it. I mean, how cool is this glove? It is so freaking cool. I can't even handle it. <laughs> I just, she cr has created this with short rows. And personally, I wouldn't, I personally, if I were to do this pattern, for myself, I would adjust it to be a fingerless mitten because I don't wear mittens. I live in Southern California. Mittens don't feature heavy, heavily in my life, but I think I could probably work out a way to make this fingerless. But regardless, this is one of the coolest patterns that I've seen. Um, and I love that in the pictures that she's given both this very rainbow, vibrant, super colorful version, but I love that she also has this more subdued, blue gray version so you can really see 
the different kind of effects you can create depending on your color combination that you choose. This pattern, according to um, the designer, is really good for like scraps or mini skines. And I can totally see that. So if you have like a bunch of odds and ends of yarn that you're like, I don't know what to do with it, this could be the project for you. This could be the project. Um, but I just think this is just so, so cool. Um, and just so clever how she has designed this. It's just, she is a very like talented designer when it comes to these very interesting constructions. And let me check, I think she said, yes, her pattern includes links to video tutorials. So um, if you're interested in this, but you're feeling intimidated by like, I don't know, that looks really complicated. Her pattern does come with video support. So yeah, it's called the Fade Out Mitts. I think it's amazing. Stand with small. Here we have a new design from Rachie Nguyen, the Heart of Fire shawl. We're gonna go over to the Etsy store. Oh good, the link works. It's good when the link works. <laughs> I told you guys, I told you, this is a massive, massive Fire Happenings update. There were so many new patterns, so many. But this, I mean, this is classic Rachie Nguyen, where you have this gorgeous body. This is crochet, by the way. This is a crochet shawl. You have this beautiful body with this gorgeous striping that is going on here. And then you have this beautiful la crochet lace detail along the edge. It's beautiful. It's really, really beautiful. And I do love that her design, something we talked about this week on Twitter was yarn colorways. And I was like, am I the only person who leans towards solids, heathers, and tonals? Because I feel like so much you see, especially from, and I understand why, from independent dyers, you see so many variegated yarns. But I think that sometimes patterns, it's a little like intimidating on how to approach them. And I love that I feel like Rachie Nguyen's designs always make such good use of the, these sorts of uh, colorways with yarns. So, and it helps, it helps when you have a designer who has a really good eye for that to make using those types of yarns more approachable uh, if you're not comfortable with them. But yeah, love this design. I just think it's beautiful. All right, do, 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 do. and close that. Moving right along. Man, I knew, I knew this pattern spotlight was gonna take so much time. Oh, I think that was the last new pattern from this past week. Um, This is from last week, or the week before. Remember, I couldn't do pattern spotlight last week because I was having technical problems. This was a new pattern from two weeks ago that's still up on Fiber in the or still up on Fiber ha Happenings. This is from Make with Meggie's. She's doing a whole series of these critter blankets. This is a corner to corner crochet blanket, and this has a panda face on it, and I think it's adorable. It's adorable. Uh, did we discuss the roller skate pillow? I can't remember. Ugh, this is. This is another sock pattern. I'm scrolling down right now past all of these patterns, <laughs> many of which you've already seen. Okay, now we're definitely into the patterns that I've shown off on Pattern Spotlight. So I'm gonna, so you, I hopefully don't give anybody any illness as I scroll, because I wanna get down to the sales section. Because we, it's now time, now that we've shown all this off, it is now time to help me pick a pattern to buy. We have reached it. We have reached the moment. So, oh, so excited about this. Okay. So, Acklory Design is having a sale on all of her patterns for Halloween. It's 15% off. The coupon code is spooky15. We're going to go over to her pay hip store. By the way, I should have mentioned already, but it's down in the description box. I am an affiliate of Etsy and Lovecrafts, which means if you purchase something on Etsy or Lovecrafts utilizing one of my le links, I may earn a commission from that. Um, and that is paid, by the way, from Lovecrafts and or Etsy. It is not paid by the designers. That's really important to understand, I think. 
Uh, if you want to know more about my affiliate links, check out my FAQ at knitswearitsat.com. But here are her patterns that are for sale. So let's just take a look and I'm going to just tell you the ones that I may be interested in. So here's the Burge Left Tunisian Crochet Shawl. And I'm going to be honest, ever since I saw this shawl, and it was on Pattern Spotlight, I have kind of been daydreaming of this pattern. Now, I consider myself more of a beginner Tunisian crochet person, and she rated this as being a intermediate. But I'll be honest, I'm not intimidated by that because I have never paid my, <laughs> my entire crafting life. I have never paid attention to those sorts of categorizations. I've always been the person who said, I like it, I'm going, I want to make it, I will figure out how to do it. And I've just dived in and I feel like I've learned so much of knitting and how to knit because I've never I've never shied away from doing a pattern because it said it was, you know, expert or intermediate and I didn't feel like I was at that level yet. I was like, no, that's how I expand my skills. And I feel like this is a project that would expand my Tunisian crochet skills, which is one of my goals with doing this. So, <laughs> drum roll. <laughs> exactly. So that is one. So that is the Merge Left Shawl. That is definitely up for consideration. This is the Step Up Tunisian Crochet Shawl. And I just think this is so cool. I love the geometry of this pattern. Um, it speaks to my soul, this sort of thing. I, I like things that are very geometric and graphic the way that this is. So this does definitely speak to my soul, um, this sort of pattern and it has that kind of optical escher effect kind of thing going on that i really really adore so that is another option that i am looking at i think this hat is really cool but i know that i am not prepared to do a tunisian crochet project in the round so that's not that's not something i'm interested in is this tunisian crochet it is. Tunisian crochet is usually known for being very um, like dense. Cause, but look, this is Tunisian crochet done up in lace. This is a lace Tunisian crochet project. So Tunisian crochet can be light and airy. And I just think this is so cool. And I'm like so fascinated about how she did this. What else? What else? What else? This looks very approachable. This is Soothing Stripes Tunisian Crochet. This looks very approachable. I think that if you're a more beginner, not yet ready, or maybe first time Tunisian Crochet, and you're not quite ready to be adventuresome, this would be a good option. This would be a really good option. It's worked sideways. The finished shape is an elongated triangle. The yarn is 450 yards of DK weight in two colors. Skill level easy. <laughs> Basic knowledge of Tunisian crochet is assumed. Forward pass, return pass, etc. Written instructions. And also, by the way, she also um, has uh, instructional videos that come with her patterns, links to them. So. That's really useful. I really appreciate that when designers do that. I know it's not, I would never expect a designer to have video instruction for their patterns. It's never something I think that one should expect. Because let me tell you, as someone who has done tutorials, there are a lot of damn work. <laughs> there are a lot of work. <laughs> there are a lot of work to do well. So, I never expect a designer to do that, but when a designer does have instructional videos, especially for a pattern that requires a new technique or a more advanced technique, it's definitely appreciated. Like, I appreciate that. Um, I'm just kind of quickly scrolling through. Here's some more lacy Tunisian crochet. 
I think this one is really cool, Doodles. Doodles is neat. I love this, that design there that speaks to me for sure. Oh, I love this. Oh, I love this. I love this Rita Tunisian, another shawl. I love this. I love the triangles, the way that forms. I think that's so cool. Is it? Yes, it is. It's eyelets, so it's kind of a lacy. Again, it's lacy. So see, Tunisian crochet can be lighter and airier. It's not always dense. All right, so I think for me, mm, let's just, uh, oh, uh, oh, that's so cool. Honig hat and cow Tunisian crochet pattern. Oh my God. That's so neat. Is that bobbles? That's so cool. I'm just like sitting there going, wow, that's so cool. I have no idea how that's done. Let's see. Does she say? Skill level, advanced beginner. Oh, okay. Knowledge of Tunisian crochet. Hmm. It's, the pattern requires a double-ended hook, okay. I know right now, not for me. I'm not ready to do double-ended hooks. I ain't got the equipment and I'm just not ready for it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not feeling that adventuresome yet. <laughs> oh, that's neat. There's so many neat patterns here. I could spend, and we're like 45 minutes into it. Okay, so here's for me what it comes down to. I'm, I am looking at the Step Up Tunisian Crochet, the Merge Left Tunisian Crochet, or the Soothing Stripes to Tunisian Crochet. Now is your chance to tell me what you think I should buy. All right, so what's it gonna be? Is it gonna be Step Up? Is it gonna be Merge Left? Is it gonna be Soothing Stripes? I need your help to let me know what pattern I should treat to myself. What pattern would you like to watch vlogs of me working? <laughs> That's copywriting now. I made that song up. I'm pretty sure I made up that melody that is now copyrighted. If anybody uses that, I expect royalties. <laughs> okay. So hopefully you guys are there. Am I streaming? Hello? Let me try refreshing chat. Sorry. Hmm. Samantha, step up. Okay. Gotta vote for step up. Oh, Star Pony, step up. Welcome, Star Pony. Thank you for joining us. I didn't realize you were here. Step up. Wow. All y'all want step up. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. I thought it'd be merch left. I might get two patterns. <laughs> I might get, it's 50% off. I might get two patterns. Cause I'm like, I mean, I'm, I'm going to listen to the masses on this. I, you know, that's part of the game. That's part of the fun. All right. So we're going to get, I'm going to give this another, I'm going to give this Another minute to see if there's any more votes, but it looks like Step Up is for sure. And I might treat myself to two patterns. <laughs> I really want the merch left. <laughs> Isn't that funny? It's so funny how people, but yeah, I mean, I agree. I think the Step Up is super cool. And um, I think it would definitely help um, expand my skills. Let's take a closer look and just see if there's any more hints in it. This is work top down and uses both regular Tunisian crochet and entrelock rows. Okay, so this would definitely expand my skills. The finished shape is trapezoid. This shawl is great for using a fun, crazy yarn with a contrasting solid. So that might be something, another way to make it more adventuresome for myself. Um, yarns, 800 yards of fingering weight yarn in two colors. Okay. Fingering weight. I have a lot of sock yarn. I do have a lot of sock yarn. Um, basic knowledge of Tunisian crochet is assumed. This pattern comes as a PDF. 
and a link to instructional videos. So, all right, it looks like it's step up. The masses have spoken. So uh, let's see, I'm gonna add to my cart. I have never bought anything through PayHip, so this is another thing to experience. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put this also in my cart. <laughs> I'm gonna put this in my cart. <laughs> I'm gonna put it in my cart and just see, okay. And let's go to the cart. Do, 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 do. Okay, so, oh, we'll go to checkout. Got it. Okay, so if you click cart, that's just gonna show you your cart. You have to click checkout. So, um, have a coupon code? I do. Oh, I gotta enter my email address first. Okay. So, knits where it's at. You all know this, or, well, if you don't know this email address, you will now, but gmail.com knits where it's at. I just have to make sure that I type this correctly because I, I love the name of my website and my knits where it's at videos, but typing it sometimes, it's a little like, make sure you get all your S's. <laughs> Carrie score. My real last name, now you know. All right, add a coupon, spooky15. Oh, I'm not showing you. <laughs> Sorry, I I forgot I had I hadn't put up my desktop share. There we go. Okay, so spooky fifteen. Add coupon. Mm, is it invalid? Let's see something. I thought it was the sale was through November second. I thought so. The sale goes through to November second, so it should work. Hmm, did I spell, is it case sensitive? Oh, I think there's a space, that's why. Let's try again. A coupon, oh snap. <laughs> Pay hip is so funny, $10.20. Uh, I feel good about getting two patterns. Uh, encourage me everyone, enable me to buy two patterns. <laughs> Step up. All right, so continue with purchase. By now, okay. So I'm going to now take off the screen because y'all, y'all don't need to know my payment information. <laughs> but I am buying this right now. No space. Yes, thank you, Samantha. I figured it out. I know, like I had a space in there. Uh, I'm going to pay with my PayPal because that's always easier. Okay. Uh, just got to log in. Here we go. Yes, accept cookies. Yes, yes, yes. Next. Log in with a... Log in. I know this is so fun watching me buy something on camera, right? Treat yourself. That's right, Samantha. I'm gonna treat yourself. I'm gonna treat myself. This is this is my reward for all the volunteering I've been doing. <laughs> Texting, helping other people text. <laughs> okay, there's no ship too. Okay. Sorry, it's running a little slow. The internet's uh Yes, yes, that's what I want to use. Evidence action. Uh, I don't have time for that. Okay, um, and I just paid. So it is, okay, so I'm paying through my PayPal and it's doing the circle. And this is, by the way, the first time I bought something on PayHip. So uh, I have to say so far, buying something on PayHip has been fine. Maybe a squidge slow, but it's probably has more to do with my internet and the fact that I'm streaming and doing all of this. Okay, so I'm gonna bring back up the, so you can just see what this looks like. Here it is. So this is the desktop share. Um, after I completed my purchase, this screen came up and I can now download. So download both patterns, because I did buy both. Allow. And I get four download attempts. Okay, so this is something with PayHip. Um, some designers 
as part of their copyright protection will limit the number of times you can download a pattern. And so Eclory has it set up, but honestly, I think being able to download your pattern five times should be more than enough. I'm so excited. I can't even tell you. I hope all y'all, I hope, I hope that if nothing else, y'all are like being able to vicariously uh, live through my excitement. Because I almost never buy patterns for myself for various reasons, but I'm really excited about this. So um, I bought both patterns, but, but y'all, um, we're all into the step up. So I'm gonna work on the step up pattern first. And the next thing I'm going to do is I have to choose my yarns. So I'm going to pick out, I'm gonna go through my stash, I'm gonna shop my stash. I'm gonna pick out some color options and I'm gonna take photos and I'm gonna put them up on Instagram and I'm gonna put up a poll in my stories in the next few days. So keep an eye out on for this. I will announce it on Twitter as well, but I will put up a poll and all y'all can vote on what colorways I do with this pattern. So yes, even though I'm working it, this is going to be a group project. <laughs> So that's kind of part of my idea with all this. The fun is not going to stop with me buying the pattern. Y'all get to be part of my creative process as well. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for this. This this, this is bringing me joy right now. So thank all y'all. Thank you for helping bring me joy today. <laughs> all right. So, um, we only have a few minutes left. So let me show you what is hot on my needles right now. I gotta get my lamp ready here. I'm so glad I did this today. I'm really, really glad. Um, we might run a couple minutes long. What else is new? What else is new? Whoops. Okay, sorry. There we go. Yarn got stuck under. My, my computer sits up on a stand and the yarn got a little caught underneath. So, if you've been following my channel, you know this project well. Uh, uh, this one. There we go. Hi. Hi, honey. Hi, Mom. Hi, love. Honey. Hi, Mom. Hi, baby. Okay. I'll be out soon. That was my daughter. <laughs> my daughter learned. Oh, this is blasting out. My daughter learned how to open doors yesterday. And if you follow me on Twitter, you know that I equated that to the Velociraptors. That's better. The Velociraptors opening doors. <laughs> so my daughter's now able to open doors. I need to remember what I'm shooting in here to lock the door now. <laughs> it's a whole new stage of parenting I am not ready for. So here is this, I've been working on this this for a while now, but this is a uh, long, loose tunic swim cover-up project I've been working on for a long time. This is actually the back. I'm doing this uh, this panel here. This is twisted stitch cable, and because it's done with this linen yarn, it looks almost lacy and very open, and I love it, I love it. So I am through the shaping, the side shaping, because it has an A line to it, and I am now up to the sleeve. So the armhole shaping. So I started the armhole shaping yesterday. So I'm up to this point in the project. And what is so funny is this pattern here, I have it down. Like I have done this repeat so much, I have it memorized. I don't have to look at a chart, but lately when I've been working it, I've been making so many more mistakes than I did earlier on. It's so weird. And I have a mistake in one of the crosses here. Let's see if I can find it. Here it is. Okay. I'm going to zoom in and see if you can see the mistake. See if you can see it. Might be easier to see. Yeah, I don't know. But if you look very, very closely, this here crosses 
it's a right leaning cross. All right. And on this repeat here, I laughed so hard I cried when I saw the <laughs> Right, Jillian? <laughs> it's how I felt. It's really how I felt. But right here, I accidentally crossed it to the right. But I looked at this and I'm like, ain't nobody, nobody is going to catch that. You would have to look so carefully to find that error. I did something I almost never do, which is like, I'm not fixing it. I almost always fix my mistakes. I almost always go back and fix them. Uh, but I decided not to fix it this time because I'm like, nobody's going to see this. And this is just going to be my spirit mistake. You know, that mistake that you put in the work to show that nobody is perfect. You can't do anything perfect and you're going to just accept some imperfection in your life. So I have a little mistake there, but like I said, you have to look so hard to find that mistake. But I'm doing my shaping now. And let me zoom out a little. Oops. There we go. So this is the shaping. And what I'm going to start doing now is I'm, I'm shaping the armhole, but I'm also going to start decreasing away the stitches here to the side because my plan is for this pattern to go up the center and basically be isolated on its own for at least a little bit. And then I'm going to split it off into two to do a razor back. And it will end basically, this middle part will get bound off and these side cables will get continued all the way up the length of the back strap of the razor back. So that's where I'm at with this pattern. I'm getting very close. <laughs> To finishing this and being at the point where I can um, block and sew it up. So that's exciting. Got that going on. This has been a long-term project and it's a it's an original design. It's something I I designed myself. I actually took a cover-up that I liked the fit of and I laid it out and I measured did all the measurements for the dimensions of this and then planned out this design and pattern based on the measurements of that garment. So that's how I approached that. Um, whew. Let's see. I know. Honestly, Jillian, I swear, my daughter opened the door yesterday and I was like, oh, oh, that's new. And I immediately thought of the scene in Jurassic Park where the velociraptors open the door. And as soon as I thought of that, I'm like, well, I need to tweet it. And then I thought of Jillian because she... <laughs> has a video where she wears a Velociraptor shirt and talks about uh, how she's doing her own new adventure with some woven fabric, which looks gorgeous, by the way. Gorgeous. So, um, all right, not going to talk very long about voting, but here's where I'm going to talk about voting real quick. If you have not already, please, 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 please go out and vote. Um, today is Sunday. Voting ends in the United States in this election on Tuesday, and time is running out. If you have a mail-in ballot at this point, it will not make it to your election center in time, most likely. So either vote in person at your polling location or hand in your mail-in ballot to the appropriate person. Um, and you can find all that information on what to do at IWillVote.com. IWillVote.com uh, will lead you to the appropriate resources that you need in order to successfully vote. Uh, also on IWillVote.com is a hotline number if you want to speak to someone who can help you with issues around voting. Full disclosure, IWillVote.com and that hotline that is on IWillVote.com are part of the Joe Biden campaign. So that's full disclosure. I ain't going to try to fool anybody. I don't think anyone's going to be surprised <laughs> that I am supporting Joe Biden in this election because Donald Trump is, you know, you know, you know. If you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. I'm going to go with that wisdom right now. 
But regardless of who you are supporting in this election, I believe that you should still be a part of this process and vote and let your voice be heard. And this is going to lead to my next thing real, real quick, because I voted on Friday and I'm very fortunate because I live in a state that doesn't just let me vote, <laughs> which I know that sounds strange because like, Gary, what do you mean your state lets you vote? All states let you vote. We have a right to vote. But the fact of the matter is there's large portions of this country where the right to vote is under attack because voter suppression, where states and localities have intentionally put in rules to discourage and make it difficult to vote. In California, my state tries to make it easier to vote. And there's a whole bunch of things they have done and set up to make it easier to vote. And you know what? That's how it should be everywhere. Regardless of who you support, regardless of what political party that you associate yourself with or don't associate with yourself with, if you believe in having a representative democracy and you believe in the Constitution, we should all care that our government and its officials facilitates our ability to vote and not hinder our ability to vote. Because if we are not supporting facilitating people's right to vote, making it easier, making it more accessible. What we are saying is that we don't believe in having a right to vote, that voting is a privilege and not a right. And then we do not have a representative democracy. Our country does not actually have a great track record when it comes to living up to its ideals of being a representative democracy. When the Constitution was first drafted, the only people allowed to vote were white, landowning men. You could be a white male and not own land and you couldn't vote. That changed. And then you could maybe be a man and vote, but they were gonna make it a lot harder if you weren't the right skin color. Then women were allowed to vote, but again, more so white women <laughs> were allowed to vote. It the Voting Rights Act passed in what, 1967, 1968? I can't remember the exact year, I'm not good with numbers. But the fact is, Gen X generation is the first generation of Americans where the right to vote was being fully actualized. That's a very short history. And it's under attack again. So just, the way that we protect our right to vote is to get out and vote and exercise that right, no matter who is trying to get in our way. So, Joan, I'm so glad to learn that you're blue. If you were not here in Canada, I would be too. Thank you, Joan. Yeah, no, I, I, my, I'm blue. I'm wearing blue today for a reason. <laughs> this, by the way, is my election scarf. This is the scarf that I wear when I go to vote. It's made up of tiny, American flags, that's something else. You know, people, well, I could go on and on, but I just wanted to say that about voting, and I think put that plug in to exercise your right to vote, and again, no matter where you fall on the political spectrum, or don't fall at all, we should all care about the right to vote, because if we don't have the right to vote, really, truly, practically have the right to vote, then we do not live in a democracy. And all of our other freedoms, all of our other rights are going to be under attack. All of them. So that's my feeling on it. <laughs> that's my little political statement. Soapbox just before the election. Thank you. If you stuck around to hear it, I appreciate it. Um, I try not to get too, too political here, but some things are not just about politics. Some things are about kind of our fundamental principles and values. And I think this is more than political. It's about values. So that's my feeling. Okay. Jill <laughs> yes, all of this. Thanks, Jillian. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. You know, Hunter Hammersman, she had a really good blog post about kind of attracting 
the kind of followers that you want. And part of that is being open about where you stand on important issues. So it's not always easy for me because I never want to put people off or make people feel uncomfortable or offend people. So sometimes I'm a little like, oh, should I say this? But I'm also very opinionated. <laughs> so I usually fall on the side of I'm going to just say it. Anyway, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. So coming up, yes, important programming updates. Let's get through that. Um, this is very important. I'm pretty sure, I'm 80% sure there will be no new uploaded video this coming Friday for a couple reasons. One, um, I have been volunteering to text voters to help get out the vote. And um, normally I've been trying to shoot videos on Saturday. Yesterday I was volunteering. Tomorrow I'm gonna to be volunteering. I'm probably gonna to try to put in some more time today. So I just don't think until after the election, I'm going to have time to shoot a video and then edit it and get it up by Friday. So I'm just going to admit now that I'm only human and sleep is a necessity. The other reason though, I'm probably not gonna upload a video this coming week is that um, I actually would like to shoot a bunch of videos. Well, not a, well, a few videos maybe to try to get ahead a little bit to make things a little bit easier on myself. And the only way I'm gonna be able to accomplish that is if I take a, two or three days to shoot videos and not necessarily to edit. So I just need to give myself a little bit of a breather. <laughs> on that. So next Friday, there'll be no uploaded videos. Um, my upcoming videos that I'm planning to shoot, I'm definitely going to do a video on short rows. Um, I think it's going to be a knitting secrets reveal where I'm going to explain that there's really only all short row techniques are basically the same. <laughs> That's the basic concept. Yes, obviously, they're not totally the same, but they're pretty much <laughs> so I'm gonna get into that um, I'm really excited to shoot that video um, I am going to be shooting a video of me finishing a project washing and blocking it I talked about it a few weeks ago also um, I am going to be working on gosh I've got a bunch of kind of like knit in the wild real life knitting stuff that I'm doing because I also have a big blanket repair that I'm working on. So I'm going to try to track the progress of that for all y'all. But if there's anything, anything that you're curious about, that you're like, here's a topic I'd really like to hear, learn more about, or here's a technique I'd like to see you explain, whatever it is, <laughs> let me know. You can let me know here. You can let me know down in the comments if you're watching this on replay. I will put up a question. I will put up maybe a post on Instagram. You know, I'm trying to do more of my Instagram, be better about that. So I will try to put the feelers out, but please let me know. What would you like me to talk about? So, um, but yes, there will be most likely 98% sure <laughs> that there will be no new uploaded video next Friday. However, however, there will still be Knit Tea Live next Sunday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. So that is still happening. So keep an eye out for that. If you have not already, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you're watching this on the replay and you are new to my channel, make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell. That always helps support my channel. Also, what always helps uh, support my channel is utilizing my affiliate links, which you can find down in the description box. Um, please never use my affiliate link unless you plan to buy something anyway. If you do plan to buy something, please use one of my affiliate links. It's a win-win situation. You're purchasing something you would buy anyway, and I get a small commission, which helps support my channel. If you're like, Carrie, I can't buy anything. I don't want to buy anything. I totally get it. Um, no pressure. If you'd like to leave me a tip, you can also buy me a coffee. That link is down in the description box as well. All right. All my plugs are done. Um, unless there's any last-minute questions, we're running around. Maybe I should just accept that these videos are always going to be like an hour and 10 minutes because I, I go off on tangents <laughs> because this is usually about how long they are. Anyway, um, 
Thank you everybody for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend and your week ahead. If you have not already, make sure you vote. And I think that's everything. So let me just get up my, oh, let me do that. Let me do that. Okay, there we go. I'm all set. So again, thank you for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful rest 